Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys we're going to be analyzing the company Caring which was actually brought up by Lynette Solano where she pretty much said hey can you do Gucci the ticker symbol is PPRUY. Now Gucci is actually part of this company. Caring essentially owns Gucci. So essentially when we're analyzing Caring, we're also analyzing Gucci. So we're gonna have a lot of other brands as you can see right here. We got St. Lawrence, we got Gucci, we got Pomelato, I don't know how I said Dodo. So we have a lot of brands in addition to, to just Gucci, but nonetheless, we're gonna analyze this company based on their fundamentals and see if maybe at the current share price, it is a buy. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. We are going to jump into the dividend summary, guys. Now, this company's dividend yield is very, very weird. Current yield of 1.81%, which ends up being 90 cents per share for an annual payout of 90 cents. Now, you're looking at this and you're like, wait a minute, 90 cents amount and only the annual payout is 90? Okay, so they pay annually, right? Except that the dividend frequency is semi-annually. Yeah, a little bit strange right there. Payout ratio, they don't have one, but we'll take a look at the payout ratio in regards to the free cash flow. The five-year CAGR is 15.04% and zero consecutive years of dividend growth, guys. That is not good. But if we come over here to the dividend history and we analyze this, we can see that they do actually pay out semi-annually. So for some reason, Seeking Alpha is saying that the annual payout is 90 cents. Now, if we look over here, we can see that they just paid out 90 cents on April 28th. So I think they're getting it from this point. It's very, very strange. Now, looking at this graph, guys, we can see that there are several years that they've actually gone down. So we can see here from January 10th, 2019, the first payment was 40 cents. Then April 29th, 2019, they went up to 78 cents. But then the following year of January 9th, 2020, they paid 39 cents, so one penny less than in January 10th, 2019. And then the second payment, on that same year, on June 25th, it was 50 cents, which was lower once again than 2019. So yeah, guys, they're pretty much all over the place when it comes to this dividend. It is not good, at least when it comes to dividend perspective, unfortunately. Now, ex-dividend date was April 29th, 2022. Payout date was the 20th of May, and they pay their dividends semi-annually, as we just saw when it came to their graph. Now coming over here guys to the graph, we got the ticker symbol of PPRUY, market cap of almost $62 billion, PE of NA. Now this PE of NA, I don't think is due to the fact that they're not making any money. I think it's just due to the fact that they are a foreign company. This company is actually French. So we're not gonna get all the data, unfortunately, that we should get. So that's essentially why I think the PE is NA. Current share price of $49.61. We'll see in just one second if this is a pretty good buy at this current share price. Now, looking at this dividend, guys, I'm gonna take it as 90 cents per share because that was the last payment that they did. Now, I understand that you know it, this is not the case, but I'll take it as of the last payment. So as of 90 cents per share, based on their shares outstanding, they pay out $110.61 million every single year. And now looking at the five-year average free cash flow, guys, look at this. They're still left with $2.8 billion in this difference. And when it comes to their last year's free cash flow, it is $4.34 billion. Guys, these payout ratios are 2.5% for the last year's free cash flow and 3.77% for the five-year average free cash flow. Pretty much telling me across the board that this is looking like they can afford it and even afford to increase it. I don't necessarily know why they don't. Now, here's something also that I learned when it came to foreign companies. Because they are a foreign company, the currency fluctuations in value to the US dollar and whatever the currency may be, in this case, it'll be the Euro, I believe, or at least whatever the French currency is, I don't necessarily know. Because the dollar and those types of currencies are, cur are constantly fluctuating in value, it actually makes it so that the dividend actually gets cut even though when it doesn't it's kind of weird to explain but basically when the dollar goes up that means that other currencies values come down and then it looks like they're paying you less dividends when in reality they're not it's very very weird currency those kinds of currency fluctuations and valuations are very very tricky but that's essentially what I mean is that they may have not been cutting it. It just may be the fact that because the US dollar is strengthening, 
Well, that's going to cause other currencies value to collapse. Therefore, it looks like you're getting cut in dividends when in reality you are not. Now let's take a look at this fundamentals guys. We got the net income five years ago of 2.1 billion to one year ago of 3.6 billion, increase of 69%. Looking at this graph guys, we can see that well, four years ago, there was a massive, massive outlier year of $4.23 billion. Then they came down three years ago and well, actually even with covid they still did fairly decent better than three years ago so the one outlier here guys is the four year ago value aside from that you could see that from five to three to two to one year ago it is fairly consistently increasing for that reason guys i'm going to give this a 75 percent looking now at the free cash flow the most important of all the profit metrics this is the one that companies use guys to essentially do everything to pay out a dividend buy back shares pay down debt essentially everything that the company does now because of that we want this thing to of course be positive and of course be consistently increasing now something fairly interesting here is that from five years ago it was 2.9 billion dollars almost three billion dollars and then one year ago it was 4.5 billion dollars increase of 50 percent with an average of 2.9 billion dollars now this graph guys looks fairly interesting from five to four years ago it was actually a slight increase right 2.88 to 2.9 billion then four years ago to three years ago it came down to 1.85 billion and then ever since they actually have been consistently growing now the growth from two years ago to one year ago is a little bit concerning in my personal opinion and on top of that they also went down from four to three years ago so overall guys i can't give this lower than like a 70 but I can only give it a 70 because it's just the outliers from two to one year ago and then the drop here i don't feel comfortable i think i'm going to give it a 70 percent looking now at the revenue we got five years ago of 13 billion dollars to one year ago of 20 billion dollars and almost 20.1 billion dollars that is an increase of 54.77 percent and actually this graph looks fairly good in my opinion aside from the two year ago value where they came down from 17.8 billion three years ago to 16 billion two years ago which i'm going to essentially say it was covid guys this is a very very steadily looking graph in my personal opinion i'm going to give it guys essentially like a 100 percent overall this is looking very very good looking at some balance sheet numbers now total assets and total liabilities if we subtract them it essentially tells us whether or not the company's assets is able to cover the company's liabilities hopefully it does because if not then we have bigger problems the company can actually go bankrupt now as of today there are 14.6 billion dollars and well, this graph is actually kind of, I don't know, it's kind of weird. So five years ago, there were $15 billion in this difference. And then five years ago to four years ago, they came down. So you could see 15 to 11.5 billion. But then ever since, they have been consistently increasing. Now, as of this year, they have not reached last year's value, but this year's guys isn't over yet. So they might still surpass it for all we know. Overall, the average assets is around 31.7 billion. Average liabilities is 17.8 billion. Doing this difference, we get almost 14 billion dollars. So guys, overall, I'm actually going to give this I'm not necessarily sure. I mean, okay, it's not in the negatives, which is good, right? And you know, it is increasing from four to today, but I don't necessarily like this five to four year ago number. So I'm actually going to give this a little bit of a lower grade. And if they do pass last year's value, they'll be higher than the five year ago value, meaning that it will be an increase nonetheless. So for that reason, guys, I'm going to give it like once again, like a 75%. Looking now at the cash flow minus liabilities, doing the exact same math that we just did with the assets minus liabilities. Let us find out if their cash flow is actually able to cover their liabilities because as I said, cash flow is what companies use to pay down their debts. Very, very important guys. It is very, very rare for a company's cash flow to be higher than their liabilities. So what I like to look for here is, are they at least trying to bring it back down to zero? And well, as of one year ago, they're at negative $15.3 billion. Now this graph looks interesting because from five to four years ago, they dropped it down by like $2 billion, which is good. But then three years ago, they brought it significantly lower to now negative $17 billion. That is not good guys. And then they continue to go further down the following year, probably because of COVID. But 
as of last year guys they did bring it back up to now 15.3 billion dollars where two years ago it was essentially negative 17 billion dollars so it does have some good aspects to it but it's still getting further into the negatives overall. Average cash flow minus the average liabilities, we get around negative $14.4 billion. I'm going to give this guy, unfortunately, like a 45% because even though we do have some instances of it going up, right? It is just the basic trend to go down when it comes to this. So I'm going to give it a 45%. Looking now at the shares, outstanding. And uh, this actually, guys, came in as a surprise for me. I thought that this company was going to be issuing shares left and right. However, it actually isn't. It's actually buying back, which is good because companies that issue shares and on top of that companies that pay out a dividend, well, they're getting hammered left and right. Not only by issuing shares, they're diluting their investors, but if they pay out a dividend, they also get hit because now it's actually harder to pay out that dividend because there's just more shares to go around. So it's an overall good, especially if a company pays out a dividend, to be buying back shares. Now, the reason why I said I found this to be a surprise is because... Well, I don't really have a high expectations for foreign companies. I am so sorry, but I just, I just really don't. IPOs and foreign companies, I'm just like, yeah, I don't expect much anything when it comes to shares outstanding. But... This one fairly surprised me. Five years ago of 126.3 million shares to today of 122.9 million shares. Now, that is a decrease of only 2.7% on the five year and less than 1% from the previous year to the current year, which is one year ago, 124 million to today of 122.9 million. But guys, take a look at this graph. They have bought back very consistently pretty much every single year, which is amazing to see. I get that it's not an aggressive buyback but i like consistency because the more consistent something is the better it is to analyze which by the looks of it has they have bought back around like a around like half of a percent to one percent of share so it's actually fairly decent so for that reason guys i would give this normally like an 85 percent because it's not aggressive but the fact that it's this consistent i'm going to give it a 100 percent and now when it comes to the cash and equivalents they currently hold 6.1 billion dollars with an average of almost four billion dollars now doing a quick recap on all of their fundamentals guys we got the net income 75 percent free cash flow 70 percent revenue 100 percent assets minus liabilities 75 percent cash flow minus liabilities 45 percent and shares outstanding of 100% for an overall grade, guys, of 80%. This company is actually not too bad when it comes to their fundamentals. The main issue that I see is the liabilities. Honestly, if they were to get their liabilities under control, the cash flow minus the liabilities will get fixed and the assets minus the liabilities will get significantly better. But 80%, guys, it's not too shabby. But now here comes the most difficult part, and that is seeing if at the current share price, it is a good buy. So coming over here now, guys, to the calculator. Well, it does actually a little bit difficult to do because after putting in all of those numbers, guys, and I looked at this calculator, well, I mean, you guys could see it right here. I have not put in any assumptions at all. And across the board, it is pretty much telling me that, well, the current share price is pretty much undervalued, right? I mean, just the target share price, not adjusting for debt with a 10% required rate of return. Guys, we're at $290, which is crazy. And then adjusting for debt, it only comes down by a dollar or so to $289.68. And with the highest margins of safety, it is still $246.23. So I'm looking at this and I'm just like, is there even a point to me coming up with assumptions? If I put anything positive, if I put any revenue or any positive share buyback, which let's face it, they have been buying back shares fairly consistently, all of these numbers are just going to go even higher than the $290 that I have right here. So for that reason, guys, it's essentially telling me that it is a good buy right now. I'm not going to be making any assumptions because I don't really see the point in making any assumptions. It's just all these numbers are going to go up. So for that reason, I actually want to take a look at now the book value per share because you know, foreign companies, I don't necessarily know if the calculator is doing it correctly because, you know, they may have some differentiations, whatever it may be, right? But I'm going to use book value per share, which is going to serve me as a second type of valuation method. And again, if you guys analyze companies that aren't 
making sense when it comes to this kind of free cash flow, take a look at the book value per share because that could serve as like a second opinion, right? It could either make your your thoughts on what the discount free cash flow is saying correct, or it could just be like, okay, this is something is clearly wrong here, right? So based on the book value per share, guys, which takes into account zero assumptions and it can be found on Seeking Alpha. The current book value, it is valued at $114.89, meaning that the company's value should be $114.89. Now, looking at the tangible book value, this one removes anything that is non-tangible. Well, the current one now is $30.12. So you just have a litany of just massive, massive movements all over the place, right? So it's kind of free cash was telling me 290 at the highest, and book value is telling me $114, and then the tangible book value is telling me $30. Guys, I have no clue where to put this company at. I really, really don't. This is actually fairly, fairly difficult. So, seeing that the current share price is $49.61, I wish I could tell you where to actually place this company at, but it really just depends up to you because two out of the three metrics is telling me that it is undervalued right but in accordance to the tangible book value per share it's telling me that it is overvalued so it really is up to you i think the answer is closer to the middle right seeing that the book value is telling me 115 dollars and then these ones are telling me what 290 246 i think the correct value is somewhere down the middle of around like 100 dollars, maybe like 150 dollars, right something like that this is my personal opinion, but unfortunately, I can't make any further assumptions when it comes to this because, well, yeah, I mean, you're just looking at these numbers right here. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm sorry, but I can't tell you guys anything else what to do. Now, seeing that it's unfortunate that for this company, these values are just all over the place. I still think that everybody should have this calculator, make your own assumptions because Make your own assumptions, look at the company's fundamentals, grade their fundamentals, and see whether or not you want to buy them. Because even though, guys, we can't determine this kind of valuation for this, the fundamentals are still looking pretty good in my personal opinion, right? So I think it's a pretty good buy right now just based off of their fundamentals. But I think you guys should still have this calculator and make your own graded assumptions for them. Come up with your own revenue growth, predicted share buyback. If you want to change the margin of safety, you can. The recovery rate of return, you can. So please have this calculator. This is not financial advice and every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So if you have this calculator, guys, yeah, you can make your own assumptions for this company or for any other company that you may want to do. Again, I also have book value that works well when it comes to like banks and insurances, re-evaluation, which is for REIT companies and a dividend tracking sheet for everybody to have, guys. I'm giving this out for free. All I'm asking for in return is just like, subscribe, comment, I'm not asking for anybody's uh, Patreon money or anything like that. I'm just asking, guys, just help me grow my channel. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you so much for everybody who have subscribed. We are getting up there to like the 1100 subs. Oh my lord, I cannot I cannot believe it. So thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. And I I'm, it makes me really happy that people are enjoying this kind of content. So again, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, and of course, commenting. So now let's actually take a look at this dividend because with 90 cents per share in annual dividends, uh, I don't think this is going to be too good of a company for its dividend, but their payout ratios are pretty good. So if you make the average US monthly income $5,725, buying one month of this company will get you 115.41 shares with an annual dividend, which you will now get $103.86, quarterly of $25.97, and a monthly of $8.66. Yeah, guys, my personal opinion, there are betters out there that give out a higher dividend for this kind of share price. And on top of that, their dividend is just all over the place, right? It, it goes up, it goes down. So it is what it is. I think there are better ones out there. All in all, when it comes to PPRUY, um, well, their fundamentals are really good. Unfortunately, I can't make a determination on the valuation of the company, but it is what it is. It really just depends up to you. I mean, if you like Gucci, they do have a lot of brands, right? It's not just Gucci. They do have a lot of brands. So it really is up to you. I personally think that because things are getting harder, people aren't going to prioritize uh, fashion clothing. This is my personal opinion. People are going to prioritize food. But all in all, I mean, if you guys still think that this company will do good, then it might be a pretty good buy for you right now. That pretty much does it for this video. Like, if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my YouTube sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and I will see everybody in the next stock.
analysis of video.